Ed, how about you? Is there anything in particular you do uh, to get ready for uh, voice acting? I just get rid of whatever belts is and let's store it up. So I don't do it on the dialogue. <laughs> did you ever belch on Mike? Oh, I just did. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing you the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the recording booths of Pixar Animation Studios with three amazing guests from Disney Pixar Classics. And without further ado, let's bring them out. Our first guest is an actor who joins us as the voice of the super speedy Dash L. Parr in Incredibles 2 and his recent return to the role in Pixar Popcorn's Chore Day of the Incredibles. Way, please welcome Huck Milner, and he's already here. How you doing? Good. Good, good. Huck, how are you doing in your part of the world? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, kind of boring being in COVID and everything. Uh, well, it's, it's yeah, the, uh, the COVID uh, quarantine has been a great equalizer among all of us, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, I did. But you told us backstage you just got a, a new pooch? Yeah, I just got a new puppy. Very cute dog. Yeah. And uh, and a uh, very, uh, very interesting name and a very interesting reason for the name. I'd love you to share that with our audience. Uh, I named my dog Libby after the Statue of Liberty. And we just moved away from like New York City. So that's why we named her that. <laughs> All right. Right on. Well, thank you for joining us here today, Hux. Absolute pleasure to have you. <laughs> Our next guest, at the, she began her career at the elder age of two and a half, where she provided the voice and real name of the beloved Boo in Monsters, Inc. and several Disney video games as the character Boo. Please welcome Mary Gibbs. Ooh, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, uh, I, I, I am well in my corner of the world. How are things in your part of it? Very good. I can't complain in, in San Diego, California, even though we're in a pandemic, it's still sunny and beautiful here. So, you know, not too well, bad. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it, you can still look out the window and enjoy that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes, indeed, it was too. And, uh, and uh, I, I, on, a, on a personal note, I have to say, um, Monster Zig is very special to me because I was one of the uh, founding cast members of the Monster Zig Laugh Lord Show attraction here at Disney World Orlando. So I wouldn't have had that job that I loved for 13 years if it hadn't been in some in major part way because of you. So, oh, well, I've got to get it. So uh, we'll get into more of that, but first we bring out our final guest and he is a legend. He is an actor and former president of the Screen Actors Guild and a winner of seven primetime Emmy Awards. Okay, and his fantastic body of work includes Mary Tyler Moore, Lou Grant, Elf, and so many others. Today he joins us as the voice of Carl Fredrickson and Up. Please welcome Mr. Ed Asner. How do you do? Mm, I am well, sir. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Nice to be with you and with your other winners here. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much again for, for joining us today, sir. How are you doing in your part of the world? Well, it's uh, Los Angeles, and uh, the weather's been beautiful, just beautiful. And I would wish the same exists for those of you who are not at Los Angeles. I, I'm in Orlando. I'm in Florida. I can't complain myself. So I'm I'm doing good in my corner of it. Wow. <laughs> it's a deep. Where, was, what's that? Where are you, Huck? Oh, Huck. I'm in Long Island. Sea Island? Long Island. Aha. Uh -huh. It's snowing where I am. Where are you, Mary Gibbs? I, <laughs> Sorry, I think, I <laughs> <laughs> was that the oven or the phone? Oh, that was my dog. I don't know what that alarm oh, was. That was okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, uh, indeed. So we're yeah, we're at off. We're at uh, we're about every corner of the of the country. This is really nice. So, uh, Mr. Azar, once again, thank you for joining us. And let me just say. Again, I've been a huge admirer of your greater body of work and a great admirer and um, and thank you for your activism uh, over the years as, as well. Um, you've, done, you've done a lot of good work in front of the in front of the camera and equally uh, a, a very recognizable work behind it and thank you for all that. They said they wouldn't tell. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it is indeed. So, but all three of you, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having uh, joined us at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. We, as always, we we look mm -hmm. forward to the day when the world gets back to normal, and we can hopefully once again host you back at our physical stages and get you back in front of our fans. In the meantime, we have this electronic forum, and we're so glad to have you all here today. Our team right now is going through the chat room, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I would just love to hear how individually each of you started your Pixar career. And we go chronologically. Mary, we would start with you with uh, with uh, Monsters, Inc. At the, yeah, well, at the, at, you probably got cast at the age of two and maybe two and a half you started working. Yeah, two and a half to three and a half was my run uh, at Pixar. Um, due to my dad, he was a storyboard artist at Pixar and um, Disney for over 30 years. And originally they just needed a little girl to draw and sketch. And so my dad brought me in. And it's actually the reason Boo has pigtails because my mom would always put my hair in pigtails um, and it's also easier to animate. So there's that. Um, but yeah, originally it was just them drawing me. And then as the movie progressed, they needed scratch dialogue. They used me again. And they were like, well, so, you know, she's <laughs> she's doing good. She's, you know, perfect three-year-old who <laughs> plays around the studio. Um, so they just, they brought me to the actual studio to see how that works. And it was essentially a year of my life with um, a guy with a microphone following me around in socks, like trying to make no extra noise in the studio. And yeah, that was it. It, it came out in 2001 when I was five, but it's definitely all thanks to my dad. Um, he actually, he passed away last year. So I got one of his, his storyboards tattooed on me to uh, oh, wow. celebrate that, but yeah. Wow, that's 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 a that's that's a that's a really beautiful tribute. That's wow. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I remember reading that they said that uh, you were too young to just like sit in front of the microphone. So yeah, they they literally followed you around and just sort of wound you up. Yeah, yeah, just let me play around the studio, and you know, it was easy easy for me. Everyone thinks I'm like some crazy child actor. I'm like, no, I'm just a normal three year old <laughs> at my dad's work. But yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely very nice and uh Huck, let's go over to you how did uh, how did you uh, pick up the role in incredibles 2 uh well um what happened was i've been uh, i was auditioning for stuff like uh since i was like four or five and i really never really got anything but um when i was like nine i think i got on an audition for the incredibles 2 and I was really excited because The Incredibles 2, well, The Incredibles used to be like one of my favorite movies. I used to watch it all the time. And I had to do one of the, uh, I had to like reenact one of the scenes uh, with his voice. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. watched the movie over and over again, trying to get it exactly right. And then I got a callback, which made me really excited. And I, in the callback, I didn't really know, but uh, the director was there. And they said that they chose me because I made them laugh the most or something like that. And it was really funny. Um, and yeah, uh, that's really how it happened. It, it never hurts an audition to make the people uh, watch you, it, it, make them laugh or entertain them. So yeah. absolutely. Well, kudos to you. Uh, you, you definitely did, did justice by the role. And uh, we'll talk a little more about the experience. But uh, Mr. Asner, how, how, did it, how did Carl and Up begin for you? Well, I was um, a normal submission by my... Uh, voice agents um, and uh, he's a wonderful guy and uh, the uh, two producers uh, uh, on uh, Up uh, they heard I was going to appear in Alameda California for a uh, Jewish um, banquet honoring the Holocaust or citing the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they decided to attend because uh, I do a reading up there. Uh, here I was doing a reading where I played a Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were une unexpected guests. And they saw me and that my doing Carl. Wow. Whatever I did as the Holocaust survivor satisfied them for Carl. Oh, by the way, I think it's a wonderful tribute you did, Mary, for your dad. Oh, thank, I you. Think. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's uh, that, uh, but uh, I, you could say that way too, because at the beginning of the story, Carl certainly starts his 
his journey with a heavy heart. And, uh, and I think you captured that so magnificently well in the part. Right. Oh, you're very welcome. All right. Who who's, who's, whose dog is that? It's not mine. So I don't have one. Oh, okay. It's fine. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. If you, if, you're, if, you, if you want to, if you want to introduce your dog to our audience, we, we welcome that. Oh, yeah. here Next time she, she runs in here, I'll, I'll grab her. Okay. No, no problem. No problem. He's the one who stole it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't he? Let me let me ask the three of you each one. What what has just been the most enjoyable part about being uh, in the Pixar family? Well, being with younger people. That's about the live and meal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Huck, what's been the best uh, part of this gig for you? Everybody else. Uh, the uh, the joy of working, for instance, the kid who played Russell had shown up to the audition uh, to accompany his older brother who was auditioning. And uh, they asked about Russell, and he had never done any voiceover work. But they said, uh, well, let's let's read him. And that's what sold him. Working with him, they uh, decided to uh, try this a rotten little kid. <laughs> hello, hello. Anybody out there? Hey, I, 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 I'm with you. <laughs> Mary's got her. Dog. I keep having to mute myself. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, <laughs> so, oh, Ed, we we lost we lost you there. What was that last bit? Let the dog come forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, Huck, how about you? What's What's been the best thing about uh, the, the Incredibles gig for you? Um, I just got to meet a bunch of really nice people, and I thought that was a lot of fun. I, I just got, like, the everyone was just so nice to me, and I felt like that might have, must have been, like, the best part. I also got to see, like, how a Pixar movie was made, and I've always liked Pixar, like, growing up, so that was really cool. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and, and and Mary, how about you? It's a role you were born into. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, I think the best part is, um, you know, now that I'm older and I'm going to comic cons and I get to meet people and just really see how much of an impact um, all, all Pixar movies really, but uh, you know, specifically to me, Monsters Inc. How how much it impacted people, and um, yeah, just really cool to hear people's stories and. And know that I impacted people at age three <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so yeah, really uh, cool. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you know what else is cool? Uh, we are good to go on our audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Peter, and he wants to know if you could go back in time and tell yourself something while you're recording for Pixar, what would it be? Hmm. hmm. Tricky. Who, who, who wants to go for it? Yeah. This too fast. Say it again. Do your best. Do I, what's that? This too shall pass. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> fair. Absolutely fair. I probably just tell myself like, "Hey, you're gonna be in a movie." Like, <laughs> I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah, how do you explain your two and a half year old self? Yeah, right. like, I'm you. How about you? Uh, for me, I'd probably just say, like, don't be so nervous because I was really nervous going into the. Uh, thing. So yeah. I'd tell myself to not be as nervous and everything's just going to be a lot of fun. And. No one would fault you that nervous energy. <laughs> you know, absolutely. So, and Peter, thank you. That was a wonderful question to start us off with. And what do we have next? And this comes from Rosalyn. Oh, what influenced your decision to become an actor? Uh, Mary, you didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, often, a lot of these like panels that I do, the questions don't really pertain to me. <laughs> but, no, but that's my dad. I'll, I'll give that one to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Huck, how about you? Uh, my two sisters, uh, when I was younger, like when I was four, they both were in like a theater program. And I, well, once I was old enough, I would always say, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. But then I started doing shows like uh, theater shows and stuff like that. And then I got a manager and then, yeah, that's really good. Cool. 
Oh, very nice. And and Ed, what what got you interested in acting? Well, I was always a ham. But, uh, uh, appearing in some school plays and always eager to be selected for uh, a public school play. But uh, I did radio in high school. I liked radio. Um, we didn't have TV at the time. Um, and um, I went to college and they started a closed circuit radio station in the dorm system. So I asked my roommate, who was involved in the theater group, so I read for the uh, radio play. Yeah. Let me hear you read. I read for him. I come from Kansas. And his jaw fell open. I said, where'd you learn to read like that? Because in Kansas was nothing but cowboys and Indians. Yeah. I shrugged and he said, by all means, read. I ended up doing the Duke of York and, and uh, Richard III. Um, when time passed and we got to spring, he came bustling home one day and he said, listen, <clears throat> they're going to do T.S. Eliot's Murder in the Cathedral as the spring play. Mm -hmm. You go get the book up, read it, read for it. You can do any of the roles in it. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the book. I didn't read it. I went to the audition because I wanted to impress a girlfriend. I read for it, and due to a series of circumstances, I ended up doing the lead. And it was an earth-shaking experience for me. It plunged me into the hot bath salts of becoming a... Yeah. Bear. And so it began. Absolutely, I'm fascinated. Uh, you set up. A, you said you set up a closed circuit radio system at, uh, at where you're at. At the in the dormitory system. Wow. Okay, so you were a podcaster long before the the internet ever came about. <laughs> awesome, Roslyn. Thank you. What a wonderful question. Uh, and what do we have next from Amber. What's your favorite memory during the making of uh, your, your Pixar experience? Hmm. Who's got one? Um, my favorite memory was uh, in between, like on both uh, after like recording. I remember that uh, uh, I learned how to play pool there. <laughs> There's like a little pool room and uh, a bunch of the people would go, like we would go over there and play and we, and they taught me how to play pool. Uh, did you re did you record at the Pixar or is this uh, an ancillary uh, location? Um, I think it was at Pixar. But okay. I'd say because everything I hear I know about the Pixar offices doesn't surprise me at all that there's a pool uh, table there. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, going off of that, I used to when my dad brought me to work, everyone rides um, scooters around Pixar, and there's this big like um, arched bridge that I just remember just like zooming down. Technically, this was after Pixar too, but yeah, there was Pixar was a fun place to to play <laughs> to play in. <laughs> yeah, eh, absolutely. And uh, Ed, uh, what was uh, what was your favorite uh, part of uh, during the recording process? Well, we had gone to lunch, and um, we started the day by lunch, and we were running late, so we had to hurry. We got to the sound room. And there was a little curb there that was well lit, but I didn't notice the lights on the curb. And I rushed over it and tripped Ooh. and came to um, rest against a steel covered corner of the room. Crashed my head on it, split it open. Ooh. Bleeding like a stuck pig, and uh, 
I lay there stunned for a few seconds, minutes. And then uh, I was bleeding so much they decided they had to take me across the street to St. Joe's Hospital. Oh, dear. That they put in about six um, staples. And we came back. And I did the day's work. And I felt great. Bleeding does a lot. So six staples was your favorite memory? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, even if it's recording, the show must go on. That's, that's you're, you're an absolute trooper. Awesome. And Amber, thank you. Wonderful question. Uh, what do we have next? And this comes from Kristen and Jacob. And they would like to know, uh, besides your own, uh, is there any other Pixar? I'll just say any animation character in general that you would like to play. I do work. I get my jobs, and I love each one. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair, and and you've certainly done a, a great deal in, in animation outside of Pixar. What's that? You've done a great deal of animation outside of Pixar. Uh, your role in Gargoyles, uh, I adored, and I absolutely adored your performance as Granny Goodness in the DC uh, features. So that was fun. I, I have. <laughs> to a tape of what I did before every time I play her. <laughs> Cold bath. Yes, the beloved granny. So, so Huck, is any uh, any other animation character in general that uh, you'd like to take a crack at? Um, I can't I can't really think of one, but I really like playing my character. I think yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, what was it like recently to come back to it for the uh, Pixar short? Uh, it was good. Yeah. Right, on. <laughs> right, right on. So, uh, Mary, uh, how about you? If you could, uh, you could select from the world of animation. Is there anything you'd like to take a crack at? Or yeah. Feel like I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't mind being a Disney princess. You know, that'd be. <laughs> I take, I take any one of those. I think. <laughs> yeah. I. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. Classic. I I can totally see it. Well, we need we need. We, uh, I know from your uh, last time you appeared on our physical shows, uh, you're uh, you're rather an expert in the hula hoop. So we need to create a I hula hoop it. for you. Now it's been more. Uh, I, I've been um, fire spinning with a rope dart. That's my new my new thing. So really, It'll probably be some like like Moana, you know, princess like Hawaiian fire spinning. That's kind of what it's going for. I don't know. So, I've also ran yeah. interest, but fire spitting is one of them. See me with a hula hoop, have you? Hula hoop, I mean, I could do a headstand with a hula hoop on my foot. You know, <laughs> random talents that aren't super yeah. useful in the real world. But. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> These are great. And Kristen and Jacob, thank you. Great question. Uh, what do we have next from Adrienne? Oh, uh, was there a book that has inspired you? Yeah, who wants to go first? Hmm. Yeah, when I was a kid, Pinocchio. No, 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 it wasn't Pinocchio. It was um, um, damn it! I had it and I lost it. Wait a minute. Go ahead. I'll think about it. Okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, Huck, you got one? Um, I'm trying to think because no, that's Bambi, that's fine. Bambi was a big influence, and Dum Dumbo was definitely a great influence on me. Okay, I loved doing the uh, reading Dumbo, and Bambi was, and uh, I guess those are the two that were my influence. Nice. I had a figure of uh, Doc from Snow White, so that was precious to me too. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. I could see a kinship with Doc, absolutely. So, Mary, how about you? You got one? 
Yeah, the first one that comes to mind, um, I read The Secret in like, I don't know, eighth grade or freshman year or something. And like from early on that kind of, kind of influenced my thinking of like how to, how to manifest and like keep a positive mindset. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely one of the first ones that I think of. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I was a proponent and I still, I still am for lack of a better term. Yeah. I, I was around that time that uh, I got exposed to it and I was like, you know, this can't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it can't hurt to keep a positive attitude. Yeah. Yeah. God you know, exposed. So I, I, hmm? Was that it? Yeah, I got exposed to what? Oh, uh, the it's secret. A, it's, a, it's a, it's a book. It's a book called The Secret, and it's basically the short version of it. It's a it's just a philosophy on life to just try to be as positive as you can, and theoretically, good if you if you put good out in the world, the good will boomerang back to you. Oh, then it's the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a less I mean, formal version of the Bible. I was gonna say a lot of you know a lot of religions have the same like uh, underlying underlying um, ideas. The secret, you know, like. So I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, it's 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 the Bible without the uh, whales. <laughs> so, and Huck, did you manage to think of one? Or how about this much? Maybe not even a book necessarily, but is there a, a movie or even a video game, or is there something that you feel like you've encountered or that's that's maybe inspired you? Um. Well, in my in my uh, elementary school, we did a Midsummer Night's Dream where we like left it. So. Oh, yeah. huh, okay. Midsummer's, huh? Yeah. Ah, Shakespeare. Uh, what was it? What was your favorite character out of that? Uh, Puck. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Nobody ever picks Oberon. They shouldn't really. So that's fine. But, but Adrian, thank you. That was a wonderful question. Uh, what do we have next from Robin? Oh, uh, how do you prepare for your voice for voice work? Um. Mary, did they wind? Did I say? I said earlier they wound you up. Did they? Did they get you excited? Did you? If you recall? Yeah, or? I mean, there was definitely like, yeah, they they got me excited in order to like to get me to cry. I had like change jingling in my pocket at once at one time when they like pulled that out, and uh, you know I cried. There's little things like that. Um, obviously, this isn't necessarily pertaining to Monsters Inc., but I did uh, the only other like voice work experience I have in a recording studio is like right now I'm actually working on um, it's an audio show called Heroes of Extinction. And so it's been my first time since I was three actually going into a recording studio. And it's so much harder than you think, <laughs> you know, to just conjure emotion like off of like the spot. But kind of like you were saying, like getting excited definitely kind of it helps. It helped me to actually like act out the, the emotions. And like, you know, if I was about to like say a, a line where I got angry, I would just like yell beforehand or I don't know, any any tricks to like get that emotion out of, out of nowhere. Pretty much. Absolutely. It's all games, all game. Huck, how about you? Did you uh, have to well, do anything? Well, a couple of times in Pixar, I would run around a lot because it runs around a lot. Just trying to get really energetic. And yeah. And I'd also uh, listen to a couple of the uh, things from the old movie. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Ed, how about you? Is there anything in particular you do? Uh, to get ready for uh, voice acting? I just get rid of whatever belches and let's store it up. So I don't do it on the dialogue. <laughs> fair. Absolutely fair. <laughs> did Did you ever belch on Mike? Oh, I just did. <laughs> touche, touche. And Robin, thank you. Great question. Uh, and this one from Amber. Uh, uh, what films or shows did you grow up with that uh, you remember fondly? I'll add that to it. Ferdinand the Bull for me. I love it. I love the I, like I'm, I love I, Flowers. I reading that book. I liked huh? the book, Ferdinand the Bull. I used to read that when I was little. I didn't know there was a show, though. <laughs> yeah, D Disney did uh, an animated version of it. It's a, it was a short version, but yeah, they did one. So, so yeah, I'm a big, big admirer of Ferdinand as well. So, uh, 
Huck, any uh, films or shows that uh, you were into or maybe into now? Um, I mean, I really, I really like the first in Chronicles when I was young. But um, I, I really like Star Wars and stuff like that. I really like that style of thing. I really like oh, you, I also like stuff like that. You're the latest in scientific marvel and stuff. We, uh, we had lived with caveman ideologies growing up when I did, so it's not the same. You have great benefits awarded to you, so you have a lot to pick for. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is very true, very true. And uh, Mary, besides Ferdinand, uh, what uh, what else were you, were you into show-wise? Uh, shows that uh, pop into my head, like uh, Cat Dog, Angry Beavers, Hey Arnold, SpongeBob. As I got older, Hannah Montana. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Those are... <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. There's no wrong answers here. Awesome. And Amber, thank you. Wonderful question. What do we have next? And this comes from Radio Man, who wants to know, are you afraid of heights? <laughs> well, that's a, yeah, who's, okay, let me ask this one. Who's not afraid of heights? Yeah. I'm not afraid of heights, but I don't like roller coasters. <laughs> pretty much the same with me. I don't like roller coasters. Yeah, I'm always just, like holding everyone's bags. And Ed, 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 Ed what, what's your what's your opinion on heights? I don't trust my legs. I walk with <laughs> pain, so I automatically have less stability than uh, regular two-legged people. <laughs> so heights not your thing. Mm. <laughs> uh, it would be that way, and as as for myself, as a it's a guy who barely peaks over five foot five. Uh, I don't even like to sit in high tops, so it's good to know. <laughs> and Radiohead, thank you. <laughs> that was an interesting question, to say the least. What do we have next? And this is going to come from Ryan. What was it like seeing your character or merchandise out there in the world in collectible form? So in other words, short version of what's it like seeing yourself as an action figure? It was like the second coming. <laughs> I I, I, man had invented perpetual life. I thought it was good. Absolutely, absolutely. And Mary, you've been I mean made so many pot boilers in my life. I was amazed that I loved the picture. <laughs> See, yeah, it took took long enough, but you finally saw yourself in the toy aisle. Uh, uh. Uh, indeed, indeed. Mary, what was it like having to grow up with yeah. your yeah, with your this doppelganger of yours? <laughs> the first uh, story that I could think of um, when I was in kindergarten, and this was right, I was five, so the movie was just about to come out, but all the toys, like this toy, was out, and I brought a boot all in for show and tell at my school. And again, the movie hasn't come out yet, but I was like showing, you know, this one's old, so it sounds like a horror version of Boo. Uh, you can hear that, <laughs> her batteries are dying. Um, but I brought um, this in and I was, you know, if you press her belly, it, it says my voice. And so I was showing telling that. And then at the end, a mom, um, one of the other moms comes up to my mom and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Where do you get a doll with your daughter's voice on it? And my mom's like, well, in a couple months, they're, they're going to be at Toys R Us, but they're all going to have my daughter's voice on it. It was like awkward, <laughs> awkward moment. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was the first, but yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, since I, I guess since I grew up with it, it was normal, if that makes sense, which is just not a normal thing, but I don't know. No? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fair. That's fair. And Huck, how about you? Uh, this character that, uh, you share with a couple other fine young men. Um, I remember, uh, one, one time when I was, uh, after one of these events that we did, I remember there's like an entire table full of like dash stuff, like Legos, which I really like using and stuff like that. And that was really cool to see. And I also have one of those talking dolls over here that is kind of weird when you press on it because it's weird to hear my own voice coming out of a doll. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> my name is Dash. You got a weird <laughs> 
Well, that's well, that's the character, and those things have only one little mono speaker, so we give a little credit for that. And Ryan, thank you, fun question, and we have time for a few more, so let's go ahead and roll another one. And this comes from Casey, who wants to know if you could have a superpower, what superpower would you choose? Hmm. Um. Uh. I. I know this sounds kind of weird because I played out, but even before that, I really like CD characters, the Flash and things like that. And um, I, I would really like to have super speed because that's cool in my opinion. There you go. You've certainly you've certainly been exposed to its benefits. That's for sure. <laughs> Mary, you can pick a superpower. What would it be? Uh, I would like to fly, but like I love to travel, and so if I could just fly like across continents, you know, that'd be cool. No airfare. Yeah, very I true, think, very yeah. true. <laughs> Ed, Ed, if you could pick a superpower, what do you think you'd grab? Turn life into animation. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, reality would be very nice. Casey, thank you. That was a fun one. What do we have next? And this comes from Tiffany. Uh, question is specifically for Mary. Uh, would you want to play an older version of Boo in a future film or short? If I had the opportunity to come back as Boo, I definitely would. Um, I haven't done a ton of like voice acting since, but uh, so I'd have to, you know, brush up on on that. But yeah, I would definitely, I definitely love to do that. So, I, I know for. For, for many, many years, I, I've always heard the rumors that one of the ideas of the sequel was that Boo, as an adult, would, and with her kids, would be reintroduced to the Monsters, Inc. universe. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> I just, it was like the second um, Peter Pan or whatever, when Wendy's kids go to Neverland. I always had the same vision for uh, Monsters, Inc., you know, so, but... We'll see. Absolutely, and uh, let me let me let me expand this out to uh, Huck and Ed. Uh, would you return to the characters if given the opportunity? Absolutely, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Very good, awesome. And Tiffany, there you go. Thank you. Nice one. And what do we have next? From Christopher. Oh, uh, do uh, what sort of uh, projects does anybody have uh, lined up in their immediate future? Or, 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 or would love to do uh, once lockdown, quarantine, COVID is finally licked. Uh, I've been auditioning for a lot of like. No, Ed, go ahead. Let's, let's do an animation where we're all armed in armor with lances and horses and everything. And COVID is the enemy and we defeat COVID. I'm down for that. I'll I'll buy that ticket. So doing that and uh, Huck, you you just said you've just been doing the audition game and uh, knocking on doors. Yeah, and I've always wanted to be in like in uh, like live action movie. So I'm trying to do something like that. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And Mary, anything uh, anything on the horizon you'd like to indulge in? Yeah, like I said, I was I'm doing that audio show. Um, the first episode sh uh, should be out. I think it was supposed to be out uh, beginning of last month. Um, but it's like a Heroes of Extinction. It's about a hero that's getting losing his powers as he's, as he's getting older. So he's looking for a sidekick. And I was playing the sidekick. Uh, it's not a huge project, which I think is a, it's a perfect way for me to like dip my toes back into voice acting. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how I how I feel listening to myself, you know, 20 something years later. And uh We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I want to do anything else after that. All right. Well, please, please keep us in the loop on that. I'd, I would really like to check that out when it drops. So, yeah. and Christopher, thank you. I think we have time for one, maybe two more. Let's see. Let's see what we have next. And this comes from Jack. Uh, question for Huck. Uh, How does it feel to be a part of a Lego video game? Um, It's kind of funny because uh, I have that video game on my gaming console. And... Uh, <laughs> It's funny to hear myself when I get hit by something because I remember being in the studio going, ugh, ah, ow, and stuff like that. So I think it's a lot of fun to hear my own voice. Uh, 
e efforts, as they call them, are notorious. And uh, they're especially prevalent in video game recording where you don't do too much of a traditional one. But yeah, in the video games, yeah, you got to get picked and fall. And <laughs> yeah, a lot of oos, ows, ees, oos, and very much so. So, all right. And thank you, Jack. I think we have time for one more. So let's go out on a good one for everybody. Ah, this one comes from Brian. Who wants to know what's the best piece of advice uh, you have received? And I'll just say from someone you looked up to. And this could be about anything, but what's the best piece of advice you think you've ever gotten? Hmm. Um, when I when I went to D twenty three, um, the, when I got there, they asked the, the actors to give me advice. And I remember, uh, I remember that Samuel Jackson said, "Don't read the comments," and uh, I think that's a really good piece of advice. That that uh, I would I would echo that. I think I think that is. I very much think that is. So, uh, Mary, any uh, any uh, advice you remember? Yeah, I don't know. If this is necessarily advice, but the first thing that comes to my head. Um, because I've done other like panels with people, and the common question is like, how do you become a voice actor? And you know, I don't have the best answer for that. But what I've heard other people say is that, that it's just all about. Um, well, it's either it's half and half. One half says it's all about pers like being persistent, and you can audition nine hundred times, but you know, the nine hundred first time you could get a yes, and that could take off your career off. But the advice that I like more, that's kind of more pertains to me, is it's uh, all about being in the right place at the right time. You know, it's not the best piece of advice because you can't really do anything with it except like live your life. But I think that's probably, I don't know, it resonates with me. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And Ed, what uh, what do you think is the best piece of advice that anyone ever gave you? Save your money. <laughs> that is good advice of any age and any time and any occupation. <laughs> you should have told me that when I was 18 and I got my check from Ultrazine. I blew it all on tattoos and traveling, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. And Brian, thank you very much. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the uh, voices of Pixar. Gentlemen and lady, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go? Uh, thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Yeah, just thank you for being adaptable in this COVID time and like doing this virtually. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be with young people and to talk about a piece of work that I'm very proud of. It has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all here today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us, and thank you all for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands.